Yeah, yeah, we really don't know who you are. You really are a man of mystery. So what's up people and welcome to another Lita Battle Angel discussion. And for today, I want to talk about the cinematic Nova. Who is he? What do we know about him? What is he going to be in the future sequels, if there are going to be any sequels, in the cinematic universe? This is not a this is how it is sort of video, but rather a discussion on the speculation of what he may be and how he blends into the world of the cinematic Alita Battle Angel universe. And as such, there will be spoilers, and because of that, I will have to give my usual spoiler alert. Uh, although I will be talking about the cinematic Nova, and although there are only speculations in this video, since I will be taking clues from the majority of other mediums out there, including the novels and the manga, there will be information that is put into this video that may expand the cinematic universe in ways that you don't want to know now. So if you haven't read the manga, if you haven't read the novels, and if you don't want to be spoiled, then you may want to turn off this video. And with that, let's start talking about Cinematic Nova. So, as many of you people who have watched the movie and have read the manga know that the Alita Battle Angel movie more or less was faithful to the manga. A good majority of the story was in parallel with the story in the manga, and overall the look and feel of the movie was very much similar to what you saw in the source material. But there were differences, including the history of the world, and most notably, the specific character who came out at the end for only a few minutes who turned out to be the true antagonist of the original movie. And so the question comes up to every movie gore, who exactly is this guy, and how come we didn't learn that much about him in the movie? But for, of course, all the comic viewers, the question was, hey, this guy is different from the guy we know in the comic, and so if he is different, who is this guy, and how does he fit into the cinematic universe and the overall lore? And so I wanted to touch base with this discussion with regards to things that we have seen in the other mediums, including the manga, and see if we could get some understanding of what's going on in the cinematic universe. And so as we know from the manga, yes, Destinova is the main antagonist to the majority of at least the original manga series. And to some extent, does extend even into Last Order and Mars Chronicle. And so if you wanted to choose an overall bad guy for the comic, most of the comic readers will still choose Destinova. So this is in line with what you already see in the movie. But the question that comes out is, of course, there is differences that you see. So that seems to indicate that there are going to be differences, especially in the character portrayal of who Nova is. And since he is the most important antagonist, in my opinion, to the series, his change in the movie will make an overall impact that may be significant in possibly a good way or a bad way. So today I just wanted to go over some of the things I remember from the various mediums and just compare them. And so yeah, Nova. Nova is a genius. He is also completely crazy if you want to give a broad definition of crazy. Because he's not really out of control like a lot of people might define crazy as. He is truly in control, but what he has in control is completely off in left field. Many people often give a very positive explanation to the term thinking out of the box. Well, Nova thinks so far out of the box that it just drives everybody crazy watching what he does. And the question that comes back to every manga reader 
is that since that antagonist was so unique and so creative, they would like to see that level of unique creativity in the movie or in the cinematic universe. The question is, will Nova be the same in the cinematic universe? Because from what we see, we don't see a similar sort of person. And so what we hope is that there is a similarity, maybe not in the position that that person has, but at least in the mindset within that person. If the overall philosophies and the psychology of Desnova is similar, then I think many of the manga readers, probably not all, but many of them, including myself, can accept that in the cinematic universe. But if his mindset turns out to be a lot more cliche, a lot more mainstream, a lot more standard to the position that he has in the cinematic universe, that would be at the minimum unfortunate and more so upsetting. And so I would expect a lot of people to be seriously upset if they enjoy the manga and then see a different, much more mundane, overlord sort of character that Nova may be. And that is the potential problem that we already see in the cinematic universe, is that the way Nova came out is he feels like the standard overlord bad guy that you see in many of these dystopian future societies where the controlling entity controls the society with an iron fist. And of course that's not Nova. In the comic, Nova is a renegade. He is so unique that a controlling entity like Zalem cannot control him and finds him to be one of the most problematic people in their society. And so in the comic, not only does he not rule Zalem, but he is actually exiled out of Zalem, similar to Dakido. And so, of course, that character turns out to be very good because he brings in chaos. He brings in so much unpredictable surprises in the story that if that disappeared, that will greatly dampen the interest of the story. So now, who is this Nova? Because there is such a worry for this character by the manga fans, I would like to see what this Nova is like. And so we could go delving into this. We already know from the movie that he is up in Zalem, which is not the case with the comic where he is down in Iron City. But that's just a locational problem. And since in both cases he is originally a Zalemite, one of the elites due to a very special project, the Gene Project, that you can somewhat relate that part with him. The difficult part comes in, once again, he seems to be a leader of Zalem. And Zalem, just like in the manga for the cinematic universe, is a very controlling overlord to the citizens of Iron City. And so, if you understand the persona of the comic or the source material that's Nova as being a man of chaos, a man who really doesn't feel anything towards order. Anything is possible and if it's worthwhile, then damn the order, let's go that direction. Whereas what you see in the movie so far is that Destinova feels like he has basically created the dominating, controlling entity of Zala. So does that mean that there is a different personality? It's a little bit hard to say. He is very chaotic so far that we see, even in the movie, and he does some very interesting things in the movie, such as, of course, the destruction of Hugo, which is different from the manga because it wasn't Destinova who killed Hugo in the manga, but at least it's in line with the character of what Destinova could be. If it's something that provokes his curiosity and his amusement, then he will go ahead and do that. And destroying a person like Hugo would be no problem to a comic Nova. So him doing that in the movie doesn't particularly worry me. There is also the discussions that go on between Elita 
and Nova through Vector. And from there, we also see that Nova is a very unique entity. He isn't demanding Alita to stand down. Instead, he's already curious about Alita. And one interesting thing that I found in that small dialogue was that he said Alita exceeded his expectations. So right from that point, he's already giving a certain amount of adoration to Alita, which is something that you did see in the comic. One of the great things about Destinova is as much as he is an antagonist, he doesn't hate the protagonist. He's not doing what he does out of the sheer anger and the need to hurt and take down the protagonist. He does it because he's very interested in the protagonist and finds that it is very interesting to see just how far the protagonist can go under pressure. Since the protagonist is such a strong warrior, let's find out just how strong she is, both physically and psychologically, by sending her through some of the most insane situations that you can think of. And to be honest, from the dialogue that we heard, that Nova can be there, so it is still promising. I am still hoping that that Nova that we saw in the comic from a psychological point of view, is the Nova that we see up there. He's just doing it from a different perspective. So now, let's go into what we see in the other source material um, from the cinematic universe, which are the novels. And from the novels, we do find many, many pieces of information. So once again, if you have not read the novels and if you don't want to be spoiled in the cinematic universe, then you may want to turn off this video. Now, one of the things we learn in the novel is that aside from being called Nova, he is also called the Watcher. Now, you do get some clues of that in the movie because, of course, during the dialogue, he does end Vector's comment with, I see everything. But they don't explain in detail what the Watcher is. In the novel, especially the prequel novel, they do. He is a overseer. In other words, he watches everything. And from what we can figure out, he controls everything to some extent. It seems that during the fall, Zalem almost went down. And the only reason Zalem didn't go down is due to some very unique actions that the Watcher did. Now the, even the novels do not cover what those unique actions are. We only see from the hindsight of the Watcher his thoughts that he understood that they were very unique, they were very questionable, but he understood that if he didn't do that, humanity would have disappeared on Earth. Right? Mars would have won. And so regardless of whether those actions were questionable, he went forward to do so. And the way he created Salem and the tyranny it rules on Iron City is because he felt that a very hard rule was necessary to control the people and push down the anarchy and the chaos that occurred after the fall to bring order and peace back to Earth. Now, of course, if you look at the comic, that is exactly what Arthur Farrell, the founder of the new civilization in the comic, had to do. So, there are remnants of Destinova's persona, or the Watcher's persona, as Arthur Farrell. But Arthur Farrell is a very different character from Destinova. Destinova loves chaos. Arthur Farrell loved control. They're somewhat polar opposites. So what did happen with the Watcher? And that is a very interesting point. If we are going to get Destinova, the one we love in the comic, how can you get a Destinova knowing that in the novels that Destinova was the one to bring control? But there is one other point that I could see that may still bring in the comics type of Destinova. 
Even the comics Destanova would say that if he needed to keep the civilization going so that he could keep his experiments and his curiosity going, then he may eventually do so as well by bringing tyranny and a hard hand into controlling it. It's not that he doesn't want chaos. It's just that at that time, it's not the most appropriate thing to do. And one thing about Desnova that was always interesting, even in the comic, is he does what he feels is the most appropriate thing to do. That's why he is such a great antagonist and such a unique antagonist. Because even in the comic, he finds out that sometimes saving the protagonist is the better thing to do than to get rid of her. Which is very unique from an antagonist's point of view. Why would an antagonist save a protagonist? But from his perspective, when he feels that it's better to save the protagonist, then he will do so only to turn around later when he finds out that it's better to destroy the protagonist, that he will do so as well. He's very quick at being able to flip based on what he feels is his own logic. And so here, even though he may be a chaotic person, for the moment he may feel that it's very interesting to just grow the civilization the way it needs to grow using hardlined order. But if it's Nova, then of course within that hardlined order, if it ever turns out that chaos is necessary, he will do so. And in the movie, that may still be the case, because as much as he needs order to control and increase the civilization after the fall, you do notice that he did insert Grushka into that entire civilization. And why is Grushka there? From the comic, we know that Grushka was somewhat an experiment of bringing in chaos into an ordered society. Basically, his question was, if I throw a rock into a serene pond, what will it do? And his rock was Grushka. And he threw Grushka right into a neighborhood and wanted to see exactly what sort of calamity will come out. And what you see in the cinematic universe is that's exactly what Grushka is there too. Yeah, I apologize. In the comic, it is Makaku. And in the uh, cinematic universe, it is Grushka. And in the OVA, it's Grushka. I get those mixed up there. I apologize for that. But anyway, so that seems to indicate that he loves his chaos. And he will bring that chaos in whenever he feels that he can and whenever he feels that it's most interesting to progress that. So when he wants order, he will bring in order. When he wants tyranny, he will bring in tyranny. And when he wants to destroy that with chaos, he will be happy to do so. Now all those things indicate that from a personality, he is very much like the source material Nova. Now the other thing we find out that he is immortal. He is 300 years old at least. And that's something that is not a spoiler from the novel, although the novel directly says that, but we already know that from the movie. Because of the fact that during the flashback, where Alita was training with Gelda, Gelda did show Nova as being the enemy that they needed to target. And that said two things. One was that Nova was that old, and second, Nova was the main target of the Kunstlers when they attacked Earth. So, of course, that brings up the second question. What happened to Alita? Why did she end up in the junkyard? We know from the other flashback that they were climbing the cables, and Gelda specifically said to Alita, you need to go up there to destroy Zala. But we also know from the previous flashback that she said, you need to target Nova. So if you put the two and two together, she needs to take down Zalem by taking out Nova. And then she ended up in the junkyard. So if I speculate, it would indicate that whatever happened seemed to be a one-on-one -on -one confrontation between Alita and Nova, and Alita lost. And knowing just how powerful Alita is, 
and Nova having no martial arts capability seems to indicate that if you got to a one-on-one -on -one with Nova, he would have a hard time staying alive against Elita unless he had some, you know, technology in his back pocket. But the question that comes up first, why is he immortal? Okay, in the comic, there are some situations that may make him immortal, like stereotomy. But in the comic, he's not that old, right? He, the Gene Project was not that long ago. It's definitely not 300 years old. And so he doesn't have that immortality, not backdating into the history of the Earth the way we see with the cinematic Nova. So why is there a difference? Why does Nova have to be that old in the cinema? Which indicates that whatever happened potentially may have also given him this immortality. And when you read the comic and why he's called the Watcher, it almost feels like he is burdened with having to take care of society. And he's also burdened with having to do that for a really, really long time. And remembering that one statement that he made to Alita, if you live as long as he did, being immortal, you get your enjoyment out of watching other people die, then you know that this person is very chaotic as well. And so that seems to indicate that maybe he doesn't particularly want to grow the civilization right, to make it succeed. So why is he doing it? Why is he doing something so out of character, which is to bring order to society? And one last thing, because he said that Elita has gone beyond his expectations. What were his expectations? Because from what we can figure out, this was the first meeting with Nova. But as we know, if Elita's main mission was to take out Nova before the war, then that would indicate that they met 300 years ago. Elita doesn't remember, but what's interesting is Nova doesn't say anything about that. But Nova says that she exceeded his expectations. So, whatever expectations may have been made may have been created 300 years ago. And all of a sudden, in their second meeting, Nova said she exceeded his expectations. So what were his expectations? What did he expect 300 years ago? If you just wanted to defeat that girl and create an order, your expectation is to have that girl die, right? If she came to kill you and to destroy the civilization and you wanted to preserve your own life and the civilization, the best expectation is to eliminate that girl. But now he says that the girl is alive, the girl came back, and the girl is fighting society. She's exceeded his expectation. Everything contrary to what you would expect a controlling entity to say to an opposing faction. So what does he want? Why does he want somebody to come in? and create chaos? Why does he want somebody to challenge the very civilization that he's watching over and he created over 300 years? So is this, once again, a burden? Is his overseeing of society something that he has to do rather than something that he wants to do? And is Elita the key to breaking that burden? And so, yeah, with that question, I will bring up one last thing. Alita was defeated during the fall, whether by Destinova or by other means, we don't know. And then, 300 years later, Alita is discovered by another Zalamite called Dakido, and is brought back, which, again, exceeds Nova's expectation. So, what was Nova's plan? What did he want to do with Elita? Was Elita left on the junkyard because she was trash? Or was she left in the junkyard hoping to start a plan that will meet 
Nova's expectation. And was Dakido finding Alita a coincidence? Or was that even in the plan by Destinova to once again meet his expectation, hoping that eventually she will become that character that we see at the end of the movie? And if so, was Ido's exile even planned by Destinova not because he needed to take out the anomaly which was Ido's daughter, Alita, but that he needed Doc Ido on the ground in Iron City to find Alita. He's once again the master of Karmatron dynamics. He is a person who has spent his entire life learning how to steer the future. And so did he steer the future? Did he make various tweaks in the situation to make sure that Ido found Alita so that he could resurrect her? And why would he want to resurrect her and then sick Gruishka to go after her? From the comic, we know that Alita, after that, goes through a tremendous amount of burden. And we also know from the comic, if we go to the original ending, not the Last Order ending, but the original ending, there is something eventually that Destinova needs from Alita to end that story in a successful way. And in fact, of course, Destinova and Alita teamed up together at the end of the original comic series. So. If in the cinematic universe, Destinova also needs Alita for a similar purpose, then is he setting this up so that Alita will become stronger? Did he put Alita down into the junkyard seeing that she had so much potential that instead of killing her, he wiped her memory out, basically reset her and then made sure Daisuke Ido found Alita to raise her in a way that Nova wanted her. Not as an enemy that wanted to destroy the Earth, but as a person that wanted to save the Earth and will fight to death to do so. And the only way he knew that she would be able to succeed in fighting to death to save the Earth was to throw as many antagonists at her so that she can become stronger and overcome her barriers to be able to eventually tackle the final boss. So the question is, who's the final boss? And if you look in the original series, we know who the final boss is. And for those of you who didn't read the comic, I'll try to minimize the spoilers by keeping it as a name. But for everybody who read the comic, you know, Melchizedek, right? In the original ending, not the Last Order ending, Melchizedek. So coming back, if Destinova was the key to saving Earth by destroying the Mars attack fleet, especially Alita, and if Destinova was burdened to grow the city and the civilization of Zalem and Iron City, why would he be burdened to do so? Unless there is another even greater antagonist to this entire story, which, once again, I'll just drop a name, Melchizedek. So what does the Melchizedek have on Nova that gives him the burden to have to do this. Well, one possibility is that if Nova is riding Vector, mind controlling him, maybe somebody is mind controlling Nova. Maybe it's the Melchizedek. So if that's the case and we go back to the comic, then we know a few things. One, the Melchizedek is a controlling entity. Two, the Melchizedek is up in Jeru, not in Zalem. And three, yes, it was Elida who eventually did defeat the Melchizedek. So, are there any clues in the cinematic universe 
that indicate that any of those clues exist? Well, if you look in the official novelization of the movie, there is one part of that novel that I found to be very curious. During the scene, right after Hugo gets stabbed by Zapan and Alita takes him to inside that building, he says a statement in the novel, All my life, I wondered why all the other stars moved across the sky, but that one never does. I think I just figured it out. I guess there's nothing like imminent death to focus the mind. And then he says, Zalem is hanging from it. That's what's been holding it up all these years. Something big and far away. Maybe it's as big as Zalem, or bigger even, way out in space. And Elita answers, a star city. Basically, in the cinematic universe, based on the novel, there is a Jeru. So if there's a Jeru, why is there a Jeru above Zala? Now, if you remember from what Gruishka said, there is layers upon layers upon layers of civilization. The sewage or the waste of each city going down to the next one. So if Jeru is above Salem, from what Gurishka says in the movie, Jeru is higher and thus a higher controlling entity. So then, who controls Jeru? Well, if we go to the original ending, we know who that is, right? I don't have to name drop anymore, right? I hope not. And so that indicates some various interesting things. If Nova is controlling Zalem, and Zalem is controlling Iron City, is there an entity controlling Nova? And if there is, and if Nova needed additional technology to be able to defeat the Alita that came to attack Zalem and to kill him, was he able to receive it from the controller of Jeru. And in order to do so, did he have to give up something? Now, the one other thing we know about the controller of Jeru is that its task was to grow the civilization of Earth, right? Of course, in the comic, it was Arthur Farrell who kind of handed that responsibility to that leading entity in Jeru. But here, assuming that there is no Arthur Farrell, maybe the leading entity just self-created that and made that its objective. And then found a way when a threat came to destroy it named Alita by controlling a certain entity named Desanova destroy Alita, and then use that entity's power to rebuild Zalem and Iron City, and by doing so, the civilization of Earth. And if it found Nova to be a very good vehicle to do so, maybe it kept Nova alive for 300 years to keep it doing so. And if Nova is the very proud, very stubborn, very self-centered entity that he is in the comic, he would not like to be controlled by somebody else. So he needs a way to take that entity in Jeru down. And if you recall, who did take that entity in Jeru down in the comic? In the original series, we of course know who it was. And is that why Nova finds Alita to exceed his expectations? Because he is hoping Alita will come back to life and start growing to be the strong entity that could go against 
this entire order and take out that overseeing entity up in Jeru that is controlling everything, including Destinova. Possibly, I don't know. This is all just speculation. This is taking bits and pieces of various different things from the manga, various different things from the movie, and various different things from the novel, and trying to fit it all together. And for all I know, this is completely wrong. But it still does leave those questions. Why was Nova so happy with Alita exceeding expectations? Why was Nova continuing to keep Alita alive? And why was Nova, as much as he liked Alita exceeding expectations, putting so much stress and trauma on Alita to see just how far she will go? What does he want out of Alita? He sure doesn't want her dead, as much as he told Grishka to kill her. I think it was mostly not to kill her, but to see when Grushka tried to kill her, if she would be strong enough to overcome it. If she couldn't, then it's a failed experiment. If Alita can't even destroy Grushka, how the heck is she going to destroy that entity up in Jeru? Or at least overcome it, right? And so is this a character development? And is her journey going to go similar to the original ending, in which case eventually Nova will need Alita and will side with Alita to take that entity down? And that will be interesting. It's a different Nova, but the overall story is very similar, in which case we may have the fortune of being able to see a good majority of the comic, the original series, in the movie series. They can still do the Sapan arc. They can still do the Barjack arc and everything that's out in the Badlands. Because eventually, Nova can bring her back, just like in the comic, to take on that challenge that he's nurtured Alita all this time for. I don't know if that was exactly the way it was done in the comic, in a sense that Nova was different from Zalem, and those things somewhat were randomly occurring. But in the end, the product that comes out right before Nova brings Alita back in and teams with Alita would be very similar to the objectives and the capabilities that Alita will have by that time. And so, by doing so, you can have a slightly different story, but you can have the majority of the arcs being very similar, and you could still have a very similar ending to the ending that you saw in the original series. Yes, it was retconned, and it was replaced by Last Order in the comic. But if you're only going to have a trilogy, you could barely cover the original series. And if you're only going to have the original series, then the best way to end it may be the original ending. Anyway, that's about it for this video. Uh, that's all I can figure out with uh, Destinova. But it is curious to see how this will turn out. He is the biggest question mark to how the cinematic universe will move forward. And since he is such a key player in the entire lore, it is the one delicate part of this new cinematic universe story that if they don't do it right, they could screw up the entire lore. And that is, I think, what a lot of the comic people have worried about Disney. I'm not sure if they're worried about Disney because it's Disney, but I think they're worried about Disney because Disney tends to eventually lose the creativity for the sake of profit, for the sake of moving a franchise along, for whatever. 
you've seen that in many of the other stories. You started out with something beautiful like the Lion King or the animated version of Mulan and by the second one they have lost it. They have lost that magic. And what I think a lot of the comic viewers worry about is if there is this anomaly called Destinova in there, if Disney doesn't do it creatively, they're gonna lose the magic that is Battle Angel Alita. And a lot of the comic people will not tolerate losing that magic. And the best way to answer this is to ask the question, do you feel that the executives at Disney, if they're going to move forward with a sequel or a prequel or anything, have read the manga, have read Last Order, have read Mars Chronicle, understand to death what Kishiro's objective was in creating this? Or do you think they have not read the manga and said, hey, this is a profit-making possibility. Let's go ahead with it. In which case, there is a reason to worry about the anomaly, which is Destinova. Anyway, that's about it. Uh, what do you think? What do you speculate as the possibilities of what Nova will be? What do you speculate about the risk that may come in whoever... Uh, creates the future products of the franchise, the cinematic franchise, to get it right, to get Kishiro's message through. Anyway, that's about it. Uh, sorry to take so long, and I'll continue to make more Battle Angel Alita videos in the future. I probably won't make one next week because I do want to make a One Piece video. And I don't know how many of you are One Piece fans out there, but if you do, I hope you watch it because this is one that I wanted to make for a very long time. And in any case, though, I will come back to making Battle Angel Lita videos again. And I may make one sometime during the weekdays. But uh, whenever I do, I hope you join me. And until the next one, yeah, happy adventuring, happy speculating. And as always, giant nice day, everyone.